Henry Ford's first Model T was built to run on hemp gasoline, and the car itself was constructed from hemp. On his large estate, Ford was photographed among his hemp fields. The car, grown from the soil, had hemp plastic panels whose impact strength was 10 times stronger than steel. Henry Ford ran 40,000 vehicles on hemp fuel from only 10,000 acres. The emissions are what you exhale, and the next year's crop reconverts it back into oxygen. That's a natural cycle fuel. We think that our ethanol and biofuels and flex fuel systems are all the cutting edge, but biofuel development, of course, is nothing new. Way back in the 1930s, Henry Ford was hard at work in the alternative fuel sector, and in 1941, he constructed a hemp-fueled and hemp-bodied prototype car. The plastic body panels were composed of 70% cellulose fibers, including industrial strength, mixed with a resin binder, and apparently they were pretty sturdy. A guy beats on the trunk with an axe and it fails to leave a mark. Industrial hemp won't make you high. It has no THC in it. But its association with marijuana has historically been a major legal stumbling block. There's some of you that think I'm full of shit. But the actual footage of 1941 should be proof enough for you. Amongst the thousands of products made from hemp, one of the most extraordinary is Henry Ford's plastic car. Built in 1941, it contained cellulose fibers derived from hemp, sisal, and wheat straw. The plastic was lighter than steel, yet could withstand 10 times the impact without denting. Hemp is an alternative to petroleum. Hemp grows like mad from border to border in America, so shortages are very unlikely. And unlike petroleum, unless we run out of soil, hemp is renewable. Growing and harvesting the stuff has much less environmental impact than procuring oil. Hemp fuel is biodegradable, so oil spills become fertilizer and no eco-catastrophes. Hemp fuel does not contribute to sulfur dioxide air poisoning. Other nauseous emissions like carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons are radically slashed by using biodiesel. Hemp fuel is non-toxic and only a mild skin irritant. Anybody who's ever cleaned out an old carburetor with gasoline can confirm the same is not true for petroleum. Growing hemp for fuel would be tremendous boom for American farmers in the agricultural industry as opposed to what people like Bush have to say about it. And that's why hemp might not go anywhere as a fuel alternative. Oil interests are big and dominate likewise into politics. Selling any man on the idea that will cost him more than he'll benefit requires an amazingly skilled orator or a gun. Unfortunately, unless you're the federal government, gunpoint conversion are usually illegal. So PR is the best bet now. There are many people working hard on this front, including the hemp car and the intrepid crew. Currently grinding up for the Trans-American Tour, the hemp car plans to spread the good word of hemp fuel viability at stops in both the U.S. and Canada. For whatever good it will do, they should make sure to stop in Washington. The current oil crisis of our nation's dependency and sometimes pre-sickening foreign sources might find a new chief executive with an open mind to fuel sources other than Texas tea, regardless of his own oil tea bank accounts. Of course, hemp fuel may not take off. It might dry up like those hemp crops left unattended after the feds banned their cultivation in the 1930s. One way or the other, we should consider freeing up the market to innovative solutions with alternative fuels like hemp seed oil. It couldn't hurt, and it stands the chance to help in doing so. When Henry Ford told the New York Times reporter that ethanol alcohol was the fuel of the future in 1925, 
he was expressing an opinion that was widely shared in the automotive industry. The fuel of the future is going to come from the fruit that Schumacher out of the road, or, the, or from apples, weeds, sawdust, almost anything, he said. There is fuel in every bit of vegetable matter that can be fermented. There's enough alcohol in one year's yield of an acre of potatoes to drive the machinery necessary to cultivate the fields for hundreds of years. Ford recognized the utility of the hemp plant. He constructed a car of resin stiffened hemp fiber and ran the car on an ethanol made hemp. Ford knew the hemp could produce vast economic resources if widely cultivated. Ford's optimistic appraisal of cellulose and crop-based ethanol alcohol fuel can be read in several ways. First, it can be seen as an oblique jab at a competitor. General Motors had come to considerable grief that summer of 1925 over another octane-boosting fuel called tetraethanol lead, and the government official had been quietly in touch with Ford engineers about alternatives to leaded gasoline additives. Secondly, by 1925, the American farms that Ford loved were facing an economic crisis that would later intensify with the Depression. Although the cause of the crisis were complex, one possible solution was seen in creating new markets for farm products. With Ford's financial and political backing, the idea of opening up industrial markets for farmers would be translated into a broad movement for scientific research in agriculture that would be labeled farm chemistry. While Henry's plans were delayed for the more than half a century, ethanol has been known as a fuel for many decades. Indeed, when Henry's Ford design of the Model T, it was his expectation that ethanol made from renewable biological materials, which would be a major automobile fuel. However, gasoline emerged as the dominant transportation fuel in the early 20th century because of the ease of operation of gasoline engines with the materials then available for engine construction and growing supply of cheaper petroleum from oil fields discoveries and intense lobbying by petroleum companies for the federal government to maintain steep alcohol taxes. Many bills proposing a national energy program that made use of America's vast agricultural resources for fuel production were killed by a smear campaign launched by vested petroleum interests. One noteworthy claim put forth by petroleum companies was that of the U.S. government plans robbed taxpayers to make farmers rich.